are benzos safe long-term? <sighs> ah, welcome, welcome to Sobriety Bestie channel. Today I'm gonna to be talking about are benzos safe long-term? Straight up, I am not a doctor. This is not medical advice. I am a human who was on benzodiazepines for two and a half years, from 2007 until 2009. So I've been off them for a long time. What I can say now in hindsight, having been on them two and a half years, which now I understand is as long-term or considered long-term, it took me as long to get off them as I was actually on them. Now, I'm not saying that's a rule. That's just something that I'm noticing about my own personal experience is it took me about two and a half years until I stopped having the benzodiazepine withdrawal symptoms. I will link my story up here. Also, I've done an entire playlist on benzos, the, the benzo series. If you haven't seen the benzo series yet, all different videos inside of it, lots of information. I'll link that up here as well if you want to check out the series. So. If you have seen some of the other videos, you notice that I mentioned the Ashton manual quite frequently. Dr. Heather Ashton is somebody who ran a benzo withdrawal clinic for 14 years, gathered a lot of information on this, and she has a free book on Amazon Kindle um, known as the benzo or the Ashton manual. Uh, it's called benzodiazepines. I will link it below as well if you want to give that a read. I think it's less than like 100 pages. Dr. Ashton says, nearly all disadvantages of benzos result from long-term use which she defines as a regular use for more than a few weeks. Um, and just to kind of back up there, like it's very common to use benzos. In 2019, it's estimated that 92 million benzo prescriptions were given in the United States of America. 38% of those were Xanax, 25% of those were Clonopin, and 20% were Ativan. When the FDA put the black box warning label on benzodiazepines on September 23rd, 2020, they had an FDA press release. FDA Commissioner Stephen Hahn, MD, says, we are taking measures and requiring new labeling information to help healthcare professionals and patients better understand that while benzodiazepines have many treatment benefits, they also carry with them an increased risk of abuse, misuse, addiction, and dependence. Now, to me, that word is key for somebody like me and maybe like you, dependence. People who take them as prescribed. Now, I'm not shaming anybody who takes them in any which way that you take them. Everybody is welcome here at Sobriety Bestie World, right? But what I'm saying is I took them as prescribed. A lot of people are taking them as prescribed and are finding that they're being chased with these, these challenges of becoming dependent upon them, physically addicted to them. They're dependent upon this, this substance. And then there's a, a, there could be for a lot of us for, you know, um, I think it's 40% of us will have these mild to severe withdrawal symptoms that could last a long period of time. So it's just something to be very aware of um, when you're considering getting on them, when you're on them, when you're considering getting off them, that they're, they're a little bit tricky. There is some stuff to think about here. So uh, continuing with what the FDA says, I'm just going to go ahead and read it just so I make sure I'm giving you the exact precise wording here. Physical dependence can occur when benzodiazepines are taken steadily for several days to weeks. Patients who have been taking benzodiazepine for weeks or months can have withdrawal signs and symptoms when the medicine is discontinued abruptly or continued in lower doses to avoid withdrawal. Stopping benzodiazepines abruptly or reducing the dosage too quickly can result in acute withdrawal reactions, including seizures, which can be life-threatening. Prior to stopping benzodiazepines, patients should talk to their healthcare provider to develop a plan for slowly tapering the medication. In addition to requiring an update to the boxed warning, the FDA is requiring that other changes to the warnings and precautions, drug abuse and dependence and patient counseling information section of the prescribing information for all benzodiazepine products. And so I don't have a conclusion here about are benzo safe for the long term, but I do have some professionals and what they have to say, whether it's Dr. Heather Ashton or what the FDA themselves says. So my real advice is you gotta trust yourself, right? You gotta trust yourself. And then you also, when it comes to benzos, talk to a doctor and talk to like be under their care and figure out what works best for you. I think benzos were probably helpful for me. Um, I was given two options at the time. I had a car accident on the freeway and then a panic attack and then generalized anxiety came out of that and a freeway phobia. And that's what I went to the psychiatrist for who gave me the benzos clonopin. Now he told me benzos were not addictive. And so that's why I chose them over. I think it was an SSRI was my other option from him. Um, had he known the facts or had, if he did know the facts, had he been honest, I don't know that I would have gotten on them especially if I knew how hard they were to get off of specifically for me. 
They're not gonna be hard for everybody to get off of, but everything that I seem to read about this, which is why I encourage you to do your own research, which actually you are, cause you're already here watching this video, right? It's, it seems like the benzos are ideal for, sh for immediate short-term use, days, weeks as needed. Like if, like I was prescribed when I was in rehab, I got off benzos and they put me on, they gave me Ativan for as needed if I was, ever again on the freeway and had a panic attack that I could pull over and take one of the Ativans. No, I didn't take them. I kept them in my glove compartment for the first year and a half of my sobriety, I think in the first year and a half that I was off benzos. But it was, um, it was the prescription there was to take it if I need it because I'm having a panic attack on the side of the road. I think that is a wonderful use for benzos. And maybe that could have been a great way to prescribe me benzos in the first place. Keep them in your glove compartment, use them as needed. Like in hindsight, I can say that's probably what would have been a smart thing to do. Again, I'm not a doctor, but that would have actually been really helpful. What I really needed at that time, I can see now, and which is why I'm, you know, kind of obsessed with teaching like arousal calming techniques, I needed to learn how to calm my arousal. I needed to learn how to feel comfortable in my skin. I needed to know how to engage with my triggers. I needed to know how to calm myself down, to, to use my consciousness, my breath, my attention, my awareness, to calm my body down, to calm the anxiety down, to heal, to create a new relationship with my activated nervous system, to heal from the trauma, and then I think that it would have been helpful to have those in my glove compartment if I had, so I knew that if I had another panic attack on the freeway, cause so much of my fear was like, what if it happens? I didn't drive on the freeway for three and a half years. Cause I was always afraid, like, what if I have another 70 mile per hour panic attack? So if I knew if I had them as needed in my glove compartment, that might've been really helpful for me. So there you have it. That is all my information on whether they're good for long-term usage or not wherever you're at on your healing journey, whether you're considering getting on benzos, currently on them, getting off them, or supporting a loved one who is going through their own benzo journey or considering a benzo journey, I wish you much peace and freedom on your healing journey um, and on the journey of life, right? On the journey of figuring out who you are and why you are here. I will see you in the next video.